he is uh, a very present help in times of trouble. Some of us didn't even know that there was a God until we got in trouble. Oh. Amen. 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 I just want to encourage you today. Keep on keeping on. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Some people may not have had the opportunity to. This past Wednesday, um, we put into a box some names of some people, or name, amen, of people that, that, that you've been told to apologize or forgive, amen? Amen. And that's been a struggle in your spirit that's been holding you back. Now, sometimes when people hear we need to forgive, we quickly rationalize or we push that thing away. I forgive everybody. <laughs> Amen. 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 But if the truth be told, uh, we hold on to stuff. Amen. It's getting real quiet. Amen. I didn't even take a text yet. <laughs> well, so what I want to share with you is Wednesday night we had a chance to write the name down or names or pages of names and put those names into a box. And I've been praying over those names throughout this week. Okay. Um, I don't know any of these people. Um, so what I'm asking is, if the Lord is moving on your spirit to identify something, someone, some event that is holding you back, write that name down and pray with your church that we can forgive those people. Amen. Because that unforgiveness is holding you back from the things that God wants for you to have. Amen. I've been Amen. receiving praise reports of, as soon as they decided to forgive, doors started opening. Uh, amen. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 See, it feels good not to forgive, amen? Amen. Because now you could be like, no, I'm not coming to your house. And you know why. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 So I have the box here. So as the Lord so moves in your heart, if that's something that you want to do with us, I'm going to pray again at the benediction for that release from our hearts and our spirits as a church family. And I believe deep down in my heart, that's why it was so hard to get to church today. Because I've been praying about this forgiveness service for a month. And that's why you're so vacant in here today. Amen? Amen. Because the adversary don't want our breakthroughs to occur. Amen. Amen. He wants us to continue to stay in the perpetual circle that we've been in. Uh -huh. Anybody in here ever feel like a hamster? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 January 1st, 2nd. We promised every year, don't we? <laughs> Around March. Here we go again. A amen. So, so, if the Lord so moves on your heart, um, there'll be a box over here. Don't worry about nobody looking at you or people thinking you're throwing dollars at the preacher's feet. You can, you can put that in the envelope. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Giving honor to Jesus Christ, who's the head of the church. Um, honor to these faithful men and women of God, uh, my wife. We appreciate um, everything that you do. Uh, re refreshing zeal. The church is in great anticipation, waiting on First Lady to show up. Amen. Amen. You think I'm kidding? I'm telling you. Amen. You bring joy. Amen. 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 So here we want to go and we want to worship and we want to praise and, and we want to celebrate God for who He is. But what I want to do is, if you want in the back, I want to invite you that today you have plenty of room. <laughs> Especially my daughter and Dahlia. Y'all come on up. Why y'all way back there? Man, come on up here. You ain't tired. You ain't play no drums. Come on up here. You got your way back there. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord Amen. for our greeters. Amen. 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 We're finna get in it. Amen. Where Rich, come sit with your wife. Amen. We about to go in. Amen. Brother Barnett, have a seat, sister. Eyes. Go ahead and climb. Amen. We 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 on in. If you have your Bibles, uh, let's go to Luke chapter twenty-two. Luke is one of the synoptic gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we understand that John. He's not a part of the synoptic gospels, but he is a part of the gospels. He just tells a different perspective of his love affair for Jesus. 
identified as the, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Luke chapter 22, and we'll start at verse 54. Amen. Very familiar text. When you have it, I'll ask that you, you stand, if you're able to stand, as we read together. Luke chapter 22, verse 54. Amen. And the Bible says this. So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around him. And Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. Mm -hmm. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. He said, no man, I'm not. Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted this must be one of them because he is a Galilean too. But Peter says, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately while he was speaking, the rooster crowed. Hmm. At the moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the word, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times that you even know me. 62. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. For subject today, I want to go with, I forgive you. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and for your mercy, for your love and your kindness. We ask, oh God, for your help, Father God, for if you aren't here, Father God, no word will be preached. We're praying, Father God, for that you quicken my heart, quicken my mind. Order the Father things and put them the way you'd have them to be. You speak, I say, per Lord, help me, God, to be decreased, that you will be increased, God, so that your people can hear and feel the word of your word. Lord God, to help us, God, to go deeper, dear Father, in your scriptures, deeper in our relationship, deeper in our commitment to you. Help us, Father God, to tear away all things that are hindering our walls. Help us, Father God, to press towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Help us, Father God, to surrender ourselves to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Say that Amen. with me before you have your seat. I forgive you. I forgive you. Amen. You have your seat in the presence of our Lord. Now here we understand that when we have the opportunity to say, I forgive you, that gives us a position of power. When we say, I forgive you, we have the opportunity to extend grace. Understanding that the root word of forgiveness is grace. That we understand that we forgive some people sometimes even when they don't deserve it. I guess I'm just going to preach by myself today that sometimes you have to forgive people even when they don't ask. Sometimes you have to forgive people even if you already knew that they were going to let you down. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's go ahead and get into the scriptures. And I want to give some principles about forgiveness that sometimes we have misappropriated or we put them in the wrong category. Because we sometimes believe that we only forgive people that we're going to have a relationship with. But oftentimes you have to forgive somebody who's dead, gone, and in their grave, but did something that changed your course of life. All right. Amen. Some old octopus uncle or granddaddy that did something early in your young age that gave you a perception of men that you will not trust another man. All right. Something happened that a woman said early on that you will never be nothing based on how you look or how much you reminded her of your daddy that made you not forgive her, but you got to let it go. Yes, yes. Got to let it go because that thing is grabbing hold to you and it won't let you come. So in order to stand in the power position that you have is you got to release that thing because it's holding you back from your destiny. Yes, yes, yes. Here in this particular text, we see that as the most exciting portions of scripture as we find the disciples getting first-hand view of what they signed up for. 
Tell your neighbor that this ain't about roses and smelling good all the time if you follow in Jesus. In chapter 22 of Luke, we observe Judas agreeing to betray Jesus. Somebody said, look at him, look at him. Peter and John being asked to prepare a Passover meal. Peter and the other disciples ate with Jesus at the Last Supper. When asked, who is that they say that I am, Peter answered, though you are the Christ. Peter was warned because of his answer that Satan desires to have you. Have you ever correlated that the more you, you say that Jesus is Lord, the adversary has a target on your back? Amen. When it seems like I surrender all that God is giving you what you desire, but the devil is trying to make you change your tone. Peter heard the Lord tell the disciples that someone would betray him. Uh, you see the theme here? Peter went to the garden of Gethsemane to pray with Jesus. So some of the people that you have arts with, at one time you had a great relationship with. Yes. Yes. God gonna slow me down in here. I feel the spirit moving in somebody all ready that, that, that Peter was so down for Jesus. When his accusers came, he cut one of them suckers ears off. Hmm. All right. All right. You need to have somebody in your company, buys that if somebody offends your man's them, you better look out because my man's is right here with me. All right. People need to understand that Peter was down for Jesus with word, but when the rubber hit the road, right. anybody can say that I'm going to be with you to the end of time, but when persecution comes, you'll find out where their heart really is. All right. Peter was down for Jesus because Jesus was somebody who heard what you had to say. So he was often listening to people who were talking. You'll find out the most about people when you stop talking and start listening. Come on up a little bit closer, Marvin. Amen. Plenty of room in here today, brother. Amen. Peter was a part of Jesus' inner circle, and some could make the case that he was the self-proclaimed leader of the disciples. Uh-huh. That's why you'll recognize that when you find a, a leader in the church, uh, somebody who loves the people, somebody who will sacrifice for the people, somebody who will go above and beyond for the people, he ain't got to stand up and act like he's running things. He just do what he's supposed to do. All right. Yes, yes. But when you find somebody that always want to be right, right. always want to argue you down about what they believe and what they understand, watch that, brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it ain't about the people, it's about the Lord Jesus. So, so, so in Christianity, the term disciple primarily refers to a student or a follower of Jesus. As found in the New Testament through the Gospels of Acts, John 8.31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Yeah. When there is a separation between what the master has said and what the follower has created, there's a distance between that person who subscribed to be the leader and the person who said they're the follower. Mm. Distance will be there if you don't line up with what you say means that your fellowship is off. Watch yourself if you want to be a leader and you ain't learned how to be a follower. Right, right. Only the best followers can be the best leaders because you know what to look for. Yes, if you only want to be in charge, you don't know how to lead nobody because you ain't never been a servant. Yes. If you want to be greatest of these, you've got to be the least. Submitting to every command and you following Jesus at a distance or are you denying him? Peter denied Jesus with his attitude. Stay with me, y'all. He denied Jesus with his anger, and he denied Jesus with his answer. Amen. Oftentimes, we have this cellular device in our pocket, Sister Harper. Some of us, don't, we need to know how to get to directions and find the locale of a situation. Have you ever dialed up your Google apps or your Google Maps? You look through your Google Maps and you put a coordinate in and you use the thing called GPS to get to your destination. All right. Is there anybody else here with me? Yeah. That that GPS allows you to know how close you are to your destination, yeah. but it also tells you how far away you are. Yeah. It'll also let you know if you've made a wrong turn, and it'll also let you know if you've passed your destination. Right. Understand, you'll know how far you off in your forgiveness if you no longer feel the signal of the Holy Spirit. The signal of the Holy Spirit will convict you unto repentance. 
Stay with me now. Don't fall off the surface. If the Holy Spirit convicts you, that means that God is right about you getting back in line. If the Holy Spirit ain't got your number no more, that means that you out of range. And when you out of range, your GPS don't work no more because you ain't connected to the source. If you get too far out of range, you ain't gonna hear God say, you go back and forgive. If you too far out of range, you ain't gonna hear God say, it's time for you to make amends. Because if you ain't even right about it, you need to go back and apologize because you got something that person needs to get back to me. All right. Oh, that was heavy right there. Some of us need to forgive so somebody can meet Jesus. All right. All right. All right. We've been forgiven and we hold in grudges, but God is convicting us to forgive so we can introduce Jesus to somebody. Say it. Say it. All right. Come on now. How can you be a, a, a servant of God, a disciple of God, but you pick and choose when you're going to obey? Mm. You can't pick and choose in this menu. This ain't old country buffet. This is the menu that if you are a follower of Christ, you must forgive. All right, say it. Come on now. After having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. Verse 54. But Peter followed at a distance. Y'all got that part? Yeah. Now when they had kindled the fire, this is where he gets to the good part. That in the midst of the courtyard, he sat down with them together. Somebody say them. Yeah. Do you remember when you had somebody in your life and you told them all your heart's desires and they went and spent some time with them and told them everything that was going on in your heart? It's hard to forgive a person like that, ain't it? Yes, oh, y'all ain't going to talk back to me right now. The Holy Ghost dealing with all our unforgiveness today. When you tell somebody your business and they compromise your trust, it's difficult for you to forgive those people. Yes, yes. It's difficult for you to bring them back into a trusted relationship. But I want to share with you some principles about forgiveness. Just because you forgive don't mean there has to be fellowship. Mm. Double Just up. because God says let it go don't mean you going over there on Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> it don't mean that you're going to walk past them at the grocery store and act like y'all got a grudge. No, you're going to greet, you're going to be cordial, but we can't hang out because I still got an issue in my heart that I'm not going to my, put myself in that situation again. Do I have a witness in here? Yes, yes, yes. And God says I don't want you to have something in your heart that's going to impede what I'm trying to talk to you about. Hmm. So, so Peter, the spokesman of the disciples, the one who, who walked on water with Jesus, followed him at a distance. Following Jesus at a distance means not walking close to him. Do I have somebody that's going to talk back to me? Can you recognize when you're walking too far behind Jesus? Yes. Do you know when you ain't in your, your right space because things ain't happening the way they used to happen in your life? It seems like you angrier than you used to be. It seems like your temper that got all out of control again. It seems like you watching stuff you used to not watch. But now, since you didn't fail a couple of steps back behind Jesus, your, 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 your spirit did fail. All right, come on. It don't seem like I'm where I, I used to be. All right. A man who follows at a distance is not focusing on Christ. Mm. He's too far away for you to see what he's really trying to say in your heart. His mind and his life are now fixed upon the Lord. Watch this, y'all. His, his life is fixed on him. His commitment is weak. Therefore, he's easily distracted. Distracted by who? Distracted by the world and drawn into its ways, the world's ways. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Ain't it reasonable that we can give God our very best? Uh, uh, thinking about what he's done for us. Ain't it reasonable that you will worship him with the fruit of your hands, the, the fruit of your lips? Ain't it reasonable that you would give him of your money and your increase because it was him that gave it in the first place? Ain't it reasonable that you would tell everybody that God is good. God changed my heart. God changed my mind. God gave me a spirit to forgive. That's reasonable, ain't it? When you consider all that he's done, all the least we can do is give him some praise. Come on, man. Come on. That I'm giving him my all. I give him my mind, my body, and my time. God gets it all. Do not 
be conformed. Here we go. Don't be conformed to this world. Amen. But be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. Now, now how do I renew my mind? I, I just got excited. Just joined the church. Well, I give you some principles on how to renew your mind. When you come into a new fellowship. When you come into a new transformed spirit. When you come into your new man womanship. You've got to start doing new things. you got to start putting new stuff in your mind. you got to start having different conversations. you got to start having different occupations. you got to start spending time with people who doing what you're doing. If you want to be transformed, you've got to change every aspect of your life. The problem is, all we want to do is add Jesus to how we want to live. We want to live the way we want to live and just add Jesus. That ain't going to work. That's conflict. That's always going to be a fight. It's always going to be something because your flesh want to do what the flesh want to do. All right. So you've got to transform the way you think because as the mind goes, the body will follow. Yes. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Understand, when you are not following Jesus, you have an opportunity to be stricken with fear. Y'all ever notice when your relationship with God ain't as strong as it once was, you scared of everything. <laughs> One thousand times bigger than a spider and you end up locked up in a room all day in the house you prayed for that God is in this place. We got signs all over the place. As for me and my house, we shall worship the Lord. Little bitty spider come in the house, you all on top of furniture. God sent somebody over here. He's already given You don't know how much power you have. <laughs> Say it. Come on now. When you're out of range, you start getting afraid. Come with me, man. Of ridicule. You start being afraid of being embarrassed. You start being afraid of being abused. I ain't gonna call him pastor. I'm a man just like him. <laughs> he put his pants on just like me. Somebody say amen. That's right. Absolutely he does. But when we both go to receive our judgment, I have to give an account that you don't. That's right. Right. Amen. Is that all right? all right? So it's a little bit different relationship. I struggle like you struggle, but I'm going to get hit with a bigger spiritual stick than you are. All right. So everything that I say, I'm double responsible for because God has put me in a place of responsibility, not only authority, but authority calls responsibility. Meaning that I don't get a chance to say it's raining outside. I don't get a chance to say it's cold outside. I don't get a chance to say I'm tired. I don't get that chance because God has called me to a higher level that I've got to serve in the way he's called me to serve. Rain, sleep, hell, or snow, I'm going to preach this guy if it's two people, if it's three people, if it's 500 people, we shall hear the unadulterated word of God. Can't be afraid of what people are going to say about you. Can't be afraid of persecution. Can't be afraid of being cut off because they're not comfortable with your new shot. Don't be worried about being ostracized. If you're walking with Christ, you going to be ostracized. If you're walking with Christ, you going to be cut off from the friends with the red cups. If you're walking with Christ, you going to be persecuted. Come on now. That's how you know if your walk is tight, people cut you off. That's right. I ain't got no. Join the club. Amen. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Be therefore transformed by the testimony of our Lord. Understand all these things that's going on that God had already spent contextual conversations with the disciples. I want to keep you on that aspect that, that Peter was in a blessed position. Peter was in a position that Jesus told him that he was going to have some issues. All right. In Bible study, Jesus broke it down and says, listen, you have a great assignment on your life. 
But the adversary realizes based on your confession, now you're going to receive all types of persecution. But I want to take you into the mind of a proud man. That when Jesus said persecution is going to come upon you, the adversary has desired to sift you as we. And he says, I, I need you to continue to come back after you've been converted. Hold on. Hold on. Now, now, now Jesus told him that the adversary has asked for you. That he wants to sift you like we. Can I make a plan? He wants to see if what you say is who you are. All right. The adversary wants you to show and prove all that tough talk you got, all them hallelujahs in church. How is your walk on Thursday morning? How is your walk on the job when she talk about how good your your, your, your cologne smell? Yeah, quiet. Yeah. When, 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 when the adversary want to sift you like wheat, he know exactly what you like. When the adversary want to sift you like wheat, he know all your weak spots. I tell you, brother, as soon as you get on Jesus' road, here she come. Uh, right. As soon, sister, as you get exactly where you're supposed to be, that brother ain't had no time for you back when you was doing your own thing. But as soon as you start walking with the Lord, he's calling you every day. He want to find out if you're really who you say you are. So Jesus had commentary with Peter. So Peter was not mistaken. But what did he say? He says, God, that ain't going to happen. He was indignant, almost combative in Jesus having a, a warning conversation with him. If a leader loves you, he's going to have some warning conversations with you. Watch out because it's coming. What you talking about? I can see deeper than you can. I can feel what's going to happen in your walk. You've got to understand. I'm trying to prepare you. Jesus was so key. He broke it all the way down, Marvin, to what was going to happen. That ain't that terrible that sometimes we have a situation, and, and Lord forgive us all, that somebody may go through something. And in our spirits, we may not say it out loud, but we say stuff like, that will never happen. Catch you up. And as soon as you fall in the same aspect, though we all got the same Holy Ghost that say, Yes, you did. Remember when you said you wasn't going to do this? Boom! Mm -hmm. What God is doing in this text is He's preparing Peter for the ridicule and the persecution that is to come with the call. It ain't about being in front and telling people who you are. It's about can you take it when people attack your character? Can you take it when people attack your family? Can you take it when people come at you trying to kill you because you are intimidating them with your power? Can you walk this walk with what I've given you? Can you be who God called you to be with that anointing on your life? Don't fall back because of persecution. I'm just trying to tell you what you're going to do when it get hot. God told him, when it get hot, you're going to deny me. Mm. People say, man, please. I'm that guy. I walk with you on water. I'm that guy that was with you praying in Gethsemane. I'm that guy. Matter of fact, let me show you how much I'm down with you. What? Let me cut somebody's ear off for you. Mm. But that was in a crowd and people was watching. People super faithful when people watch it. But when Peter got by himself, and they asked him in the courtyard, ain't you one of them Galileans? He said, no, I don't know them. Ain't you one of them? I think you are. You look just like somebody that was with Jesus. Peter says, no, got me messed up. Not me. You even talk like them cats that was walking with Jesus. Bible says that Peter got a little indignant. He remembered how to cuss. You know, saints, that sometimes when people press you against the wall, all them good cuss words come out. <laughs> you know, the ones we've been suppressing for years and we tell people in front of the church, you know, I don't cuss no more. <laughs> what we should say is, I don't cuss no more and I don't cuss no less. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, when you're in front of people, sometimes we try to impress and make them see how holy we are. But the adversary knows what we struggle with. God knows what we struggle with. But the blessing is this. I want you to see this. God is watching all this go on in Peter's life. He's watching him do all these things in front of him. He's watching him fall back now when he always wanted to be out front. And you notice that sometimes the people that want to be out front all the time are the people that you can least depend on. 
Don't look around. Don't, don't look around. Sometimes the people that always want to be recognized are the people that you find yourself looking for. Mm. Preach to us, Jesus. Wherefore, come out from among them. And be you separate, said the Lord. And touch not an unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Second Corinthians 6, 17 and 18. Remember that you have the power to influence. Watch this, y'all. We have the power to influence, or we have the opportunity to be influenced. So where we go, we have the opportunity to change, or we have the opportunity to be changed. When you go into a room, are you the one that changes or do you morph into the surroundings? Do people recognize your anointing when you go in the room or do you downplay who you know because of who's in the room? Do you change your dialect because of what God has put in you? Do you change your dialect because of how they talk in? Do you talk like the people in the room? Do you deny Jesus with your talk? Do you deny Jesus with your walk? Do you deny Jesus with what you agree with? Do you deny Jesus with what you participate in? We've got to be about making certain that we do what God has called us to do. Yes, 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 sir. I love the aspect of this, and I'm going to close it down, that... Jesus heard the rooster crow. Stay with me. He says, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. He says, when you deny me three times, the cock is going to cook, is going to crow three times when you deny me. It's going to go. It's going to let you know that you have failed. Right. It's going to let you know that you have failed. So as soon as Peter denied him the third time, just like clockwork, just like Jesus said, the rooster did his thing. Here's the blessing in the story. The Bible says as soon as the rooster did his thing, Jesus and Peter locked up. Mm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I forgive you. It's difficult to watch somebody that you tried to prepare turn their back on you at your worst hour. It's difficult to see somebody in your worst hour have the opportunity to go through that pain just like you can go through that pain and they denying that they ever knew you. Does anybody have somebody that you thought was going to be your wife but they walked off and left you and they denied that they ever knew you? Ain't nobody going to pray with me right now. Somebody that you thought was going to be your husband, he was your ride. God did everything together and he hung out with every boogaloo in town and he act like he didn't even know you. I'm trying to help somebody right now. I forgive you. It's difficult to train somebody up and show them the things of God and watch them deny you right in your face. The Bible says that Jesus looked right at him. All right. In our humanness, somebody says you would have been looking at him like, <laughs> Come on now. But the mercy of God coming from the Gospel of Luke, talking about the compassion of Jesus, that Jesus was already prepared for what Peter was going to do. I just want to help somebody understand today that Jesus was not surprised by Peter's denial. Jesus was fully aware that Peter was blowing smoke, that Peter was talking about being with him, but Peter couldn't do nothing in his own strength. Lord, help me right now that Peter had to go through that persecution. Peter had to deny Jesus three times. Why? Somebody say why. Because he had the experience of letting Jesus down. He had to feel what it was like to look at somebody who loved him, somebody who fed him, somebody who gave him a job that he said he didn't even know him. When he looked at Jesus and Jesus looked back at him, the Bible says he went away. He didn't just go away. He wept bitterly. That he felt deep in his soul that I'm not the strongest disciple. I am not the one closest to Jesus. I am not who I thought I was. Somebody gonna wake up in a minute. Thank God gotta let us fail sometimes. God gotta let us fall right on our face sometimes. God gotta let us know we not as strong as we think we are. But the look of God said, I forgive you. Yes, yes, yes. In all your puffed upness, I forgive you. Because I can see who you are. When I get done breaking you down to the white meat, I see a deacon in you. When I get done breaking you down from being so stingy, I see you working on the financial team. When I get done breaking down your family, I'm going to show you that I got a husband for you.
you, but you gotta let go of your past. If you want your future, you gotta forgive your past. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. He said to Peter in Luke 22 that you are gonna deny me three times. But then this is the part that makes me shock. He says, when you are converted. Yeah. Okay. You can't be converted until you acknowledge. Uh -huh. You can't acknowledge until you convict. Right. When he was convicted in the denial, he acknowledged that he was a sinner, a wretch undone. He tried his best to go back and do what he was used to. I just got to preach right now. The oh. Bible says when Jesus came back, Peter says, I'm done with this preaching stuff. Let me go back and fish some fishes. But he was trying to do something that was not in his job description no more. That Jesus says, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. When he tried to go back and do stuff that he used to be good at, he didn't catch no fish. Oh. But when Jesus stepped on the shore, he says, throw down your nets one more time. Somebody missed the contextual aspect of what Jesus said. I'm back in your face giving you another chance. Come on now. Even if you fail me, even if you don't live up to my expectations, I'm going to give you one more chance. Even if you don't do all the things you said you was going to do, throw down your nets. When he threw down his nets, Marvin, the Bible says 100 and 53 fish were obedient and jumped back in that net because Peter threw the net down yeah. not in his power but in Jesus command when you follow Jesus command everything's going to work out in your favor right. everything's going to come to pass but when you try to fall back into your old life you can't be successful because God has changed you yeah. God has rearranged you you can't go back to the club and do the million rock you gonna be out of place. Your rhythm gonna be off. You can't do the cabbage patch no more. You can't do the smurf because they gonna laugh at you. You don't fit in here no more. I forgive you. Take your church for yourself back to church. Dance on that organ. You dance to the beat of a different drum now. You ain't gonna be successful doing things your way. All right. Yes. You can't. Be successful doing things your way. That's right. So Jesus had to show him he would fall. Yeah. Jesus had to watch him fall. Jesus had to restore him. Watch this. And he had to give him a brand new job. All right. mm. He says, after you've been converted, yeah. strengthen the brethren. I need you to give a testimony of what it's like to be disobedient. Uh -huh. I need you to give a testimony about what it's like to receive the grace of God. Because if he had to deal with me according to what I've done, somebody says, now he's going to get that forgiveness. Yeah. If he would have dealt with me according to my denial of him, I'd be spending eternity in hell. But he gave me another chance. He forgave me of my sins. He commended his love towards me while I was yet a sinner. Somebody say, yeah. The says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life I feel good right now that God says I forgive you even if you ain't asked God says I forgive you because I see purpose in your life God says I forgive you because you're too dumb to forgive yourself God says I forgive you because I after you've been converted, you can't tell nobody about forgiveness unless you've been forgiven. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I was trying to do it in my own strength. I was working my way into the grave. I tried to find love in all the wrong places. But when God grabbed a hold of my heart, Conditional, y'all. 
you cannot be forgiven. How? It's an oxymoron. The conduit stops right here with you. There has to be a free flowing spirit. Amen. I give and I receive. I give and I receive. I can't receive if I don't give. I ain't talking about money, but take it how you love it. I can't give if I can't receive. I can't receive if I can't give. If I'm not a forgiving person, it's difficult for me to believe. Here's the juggler that I'm forgiven. It's a faith thing. Most of us that struggle with forgiving folks still struggle that we've actually been forgiven. Hmm. And that's why we got to be puffed up in front of folks to show how faithful we are. That's why we got to be in charge of everything. To show people how much we know. You can do a whole bunch of church work and have no relationship with the Father. Take somebody with a broken voice just like mine. You sing every week about the risen Savior, how he's merciful to a sinner. Don't care what you sound like. I love what you're talking about. Because our ministry is not to talk about how good we are. Our ministry is to show how wretched we are but how good he is for forgiving us. Yes, 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 sir. That's when people are going to be saved. But as long as we perched up on a tree like we've always had it together, ain't nobody going to come this way because they don't figure, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. The church needs to hear that I was a sinner, Amen. lost yeah. on my way to hell. Yeah. Nothing by my merit gets me where I am today. But it was nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And some faithful servant that prayed for me one night. Yes, sir. All night long, had me on their mind. Yeah, Took a little time and prayed for me. Why they prayed for me? Can I break it down? Because I came to Thanksgiving dinner smelling like weed one too many times. Because I wouldn't talk to my family because I ain't like nothing about them. So me being proud and boasted and filled up with myself, somebody went to God on my behalf. All right. And God took over from there. Started breaking me down to the white me. Started putting pistols in my face. They make me wonder, whoa, 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 whoa. I wonder if that Sunday school stuff was real. I wonder if that vacation Bible school stuff was real. I want to have this love affair with you that I'm not chasing skirts no more. I want to have a loving relationship with you that I don't got to drink or get high to have fun no more. I want a real love. I want a real relationship. But before I could accept that relationship, God had to show me how ugly my walk was. Yes, yes, yes. That's all that happened with Peter. Peter ain't no different than none of us. He was following Jesus at a distance, but he was a lot closer than most of us. All right. <laughs> at least he could see him. He ain't jump in the fight. You know you got that one homeboy. He ain't gonna leave you, but he ain't throwing no bows either. Say it. Say it. He help you clean up. Say it. You want to go to emergency, dog? Yeah, I think you should go to emergency. <laughs> you need people. Okay. Everybody in your circle ain't the same. Mm. No. But the blessing in this context, I'm closing down, is that we have to take the position that Jesus took. Peter let him down on every aspect. He betrayed his trust. He showed him how close or how far he really was away from him. But Jesus says, I see something in him. I got to forgive him. Because if I forgive him, watch this. I can't fulfill my purpose. Mm -hmm. Bible says Jesus came that we might have life. And life more abundantly. He had to restore Peter. If you don't show grace, you can't receive grace. And Jesus came to this world to be the preparation, right? The, the, the sin offering for us. So he came to take our place. Meaning that Jesus didn't go to the cross with grudges. Hmm. You can't fulfill your purpose with grudge in your heart. And I'm shut down. Somebody in here is reliving pain that you haven't experienced in a long time. Somebody is experiencing distrust that you haven't experienced in a long time. You're saying, where is all this coming from? Because you ask God to help you forgive. In order for you to forgive, you got to relive. God wants you to experience it one more time so you can finally feel it. Ask God, help me. This has taken 25 years of my life. 
I don't want to keep living thinking about this person every turn I take. If I go to the mall, am I going to see her? Hmm. What? Hmm. That person ain't thinking about you. You're worried about stuff that God says, give it to me. And it's holding you down, holding you back. But Jesus gave, Jesus forgave Jesus. Jesus, for, Jesus forgave Peter. He forgave us from the cross. He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. To know Jesus is to love Jesus. He had to tell Peter three times. He says, do you love me? Peter said, yeah. But the blessing about what, what, what the conversation with Jesus and Peter had was, he showed Peter he could only love him to the degree of what he understood about him. So he couldn't give him unconditional love because he didn't know what unconditional love meant. So Jesus loved him where he was. So we got to forgive people where they are and turn them over to the master and let him continue to work on our hearts. So Jesus came down through 42 generations. Bible says he died upon that rugged tree on yeah. that cross for you and for me so that we would have the opportunity to go to the father and say, Lord, forgive me. Watch it. If Jesus had never gone to the cross for you and me, we wouldn't have access to the Father. Meaning that if we never had an opportunity to say, I'm sorry, we would be on our way to hell. So it's power in forgiveness. Jesus came down off that cross, not in a coma, not asleep, but he was dead in a borrowed tomb. On Sunday, he rose with all power in his hands. Yes. All authority in his hands. Yes. The master went to heaven, stole the keys, took back the power that Adam relented, gave us access back to the Father. Can't be afraid of the grave no more. Can't be afraid of death no more. They have no more power over us. Yes, sir. Jesus has the power. So I ask you today, and we're going to pray, who is it in your life that's holding your forgiveness hostage? I know I don't understand what they did. I know I wasn't in your shoes, but God was there. And you made it. They tore your name up. They tore your credit up. Somebody say amen. amen. They tore your credit up. They tried to tear your life up, but you're still here. Yes, sir. <laughs> they tried to tell you you are never going to be nothing. Trying to make you feel like you are never going to have a, hus a husband. But look what you got. Oh, yes. They tried their worst. But I want you to understand is God kept you. Amen. God kept you for a reason. For a point in time to let that person have no more power over you anymore. Let that ex-wife go. Let that mother go. Let that father go. Let that disappointment that's festering in your spirit that wake you up every morning like an alarm clock. I'm tired of playing with this. I want to go to a higher level. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We ask you, oh God, that everything that was said today, Father God, that will saturate our hearts and our minds and our spirits to look deeper, Lord God, at those who offended us, for those who, who haven't done what we expected them to do. Lord, I'm praying, oh God, help us to forgive. Help us, Lord God, not to just do it with mouth, but to do it in our hearts and in our souls. Help us, Father God, to call out those names of people that we felt mistreated us, that dogged us out, that did our children wrong, that did our spouses wrong, Lord God, that, that did worse things, Father God, that an enemy would do. But God, we call these people friends at one time. We call these people family at one time. Help us, Father God, take the venom out of our spirit. Free us, Father God, from drinking poison, Lord God, thinking we're hurting them, God, but we're just hurting ourselves. We're losing sleep, God. We're slow, we're, our health is jacked up because of our past, Lord God. There's people in our past that when we hear out their names, we cringe, oh God. We get knots in our bodies, God. Free us, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Free us up, Lord God, not to be bound, Lord God, by somebody else's life or certain things that they've done to us, God. Free us up, Father God, so we can be the agents of change that you called us to be, Father God. Loving those, Father God, that despitefully use us, God. Forgiving those, Father God, that talk about us bold, Lord God. We pray, God, that you continue to give us the spirit to remember how much you've forgiven us for. God, you've forgiven us, Father God, for waking up in bars, not knowing, Lord God, how we got there. You've forgiven us, Lord God, for waking up in alleys, Lord God, not knowing how we got there. You've forgiven us, Father God, for waking up next to somebody we don't even remember their name. God, you've forgiven us, Father God, for doing things to people that we said we love. We've done things to people, God, that you said we should care for them, but we haven't, God. You forgave us. God, so give us a spirit of forgiveness today. We need 
need your freedom, God. Our freedom isn't good enough, Lord. We're trying and we're pretending, Father God. We pray, oh God, that you shine a light. Shine a light on our unforgiving hearts and our unforgiving spirits. Show us, God. Show us how to love. Show us how to be like you. Yes, Lord. Father, it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Thank you God. Amen. Thank you for your influence. Is there somebody here today that, 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 that wants to be a part of this church?